Within this lesson, we'll work with multiplying decimals to the hundredths place by multi-digit whole numbers. Let's start with this first problem. Uh, we have 4.26 times 41. That's 4 and 26 hundredths times 41. First, let's estimate this product. 4 and 26 hundredths, nearest whole number is 4. And we have 41, which is close to 40. So our estimated product here is 160. This will help us place our decimal point when we figure out our actual answer. We will notice in this case that for both of those factors, we have gone lower, meaning my estimate should be lower than my actual answer. Next, we'll take a look at this factor right here for 0.26, and that's 4 and 26 hundredths, and what we want to do is we want to go ahead and think about that as hundredths. How many hundredths would that be? Right, 426 hundredths. So really what we're doing here is we're multiplying 426 hundredths, we're multiplying 426 hundredths by 41. And in this case now, we're dealing with whole numbers as we're working on through that. 426 times 41. And then we can go through that process with that standard algorithm. 4 times 6 being 24, 4 regroup a 2, 4 times 2 being 8, plus 2 being 10, 0 regroup the 1, and 4 times 4 is 16, plus 1 is 17. Carefully adding those together, I get 17,466, and yet this is hundreds. So, when I convert this back over into standard form, I would get 174.66. Here's another problem. I have 6.72 times 38. 6.72 is close to 7. 38 is close to 40. And in this case, I've moved both factors upwards. Therefore, my estimate should be higher than the actual answer. When I'm looking at 6.72, I should be thinking 672 hundredths. And I'm multiplying 672 hundredths times 38. The answer to this problem here, 672 times 38, would be 100 times larger than this here. That's why I'm dealing with hundreds here. And then what I can do is I divide it back by 100 to go ahead and place my decimal point using my estimate to help me. Let's figure this out. 8 times 2 is 16. We'll use the standard algorithm here. 6 regroup of 1. 8 times 7 is 56, plus 1 is 57. 7 regroup of 5. 8 times 6 is 48, plus 5 is 53. I'll cross out my regroups. Place a 0 because that 3 is worth 30. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 7 is 21. 1 regroup of 2. And 6 times 3 is 18, plus 2 is 20. And I'll add those two together. So I have 25,536, and yet it's hundredths. So when I place my decimal point, that would be 255.36. And knowing my estimate helps me place my decimal point, also knowing that it's hundredths there. So 6.72 times 38 is 255.36. Let's take a look at another problem, 4.79 times 64. As we're really th looking through this, what we should be doing is we just can look at this here and say, hey, that's 479 hundredths, and this is 64. Let me just work out my multiplication first, ignoring that decimal point, and then I will 
come back to it, remembering that it's hundredths to be able to place my decimal point. 4.79 times 64, that'd be 5 times 60 for my estimate, which is 300. That helps me place my decimal point as well. It's using that standard algorithm. 4 times 9 is 36. 6 regroup of 3. 4 times 7, 28, plus 3, 31. 1 regroup of 3. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3 is 19. Cross out my regroups. Place a 0. 6 times 9 is 54. 4 regroup of 5. 6 times 7, 42, plus 5 is 47. 7 regroup of 4. And 6 times 4 is 24, plus 4 is 28. Adding those two together, I get 30,656. Remember, I was dealing with hundreds. So, <clears throat> I can place my decimal point there. This is our thought process. We have 4.79 times 64. If we had multiplied all of that by 100, we would have gotten 30,656, but then we divide by 100 to get 306.56, because we are working with hundreds there. Here's a problem for you to try. Go ahead and work it out. Make sure to place your decimal point correctly. Going through that process with that standard algorithm. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8. 5 times 3 is 15. And then we can add those two together. Hmm, that'd be 16,801 hundredths, which would be equal to 168.01. So 3.17, or 3 and 17 hundredths, times 53 would be 168 and one hundredth. Here's our estimate, and our estimated product. 3 times 50, which is 150, and that would help me place my decimal point. Let's look at this in another way. We have 78 times 573 equals 44,694. If that's the case, then what's 78 times 5.73? Hmm. Well, 573, 5.73. These actually look similar in that they have the same digits. This is the same factor. 573, hey, 5.73, if we were to break apart this number and to rewrite it as hundredths, it would be 78 times 573 hundredths. Right? And then so, really, we're talking about this here, 78 times 573 hundredths. So our answer would be 44,694 hundredths. And in this case, to get from here to here, we would have multiplied by 100. So to get back over to our answer here, we end up dividing by 100. And then dividing by 100, 44,694, dividing it by 100, <clears throat> we can place the decimal point there. So that 78 times 5.73 equals 446.94. Here are two problems for you to try. Go ahead and copy down these equations here and here, placing your decimal point carefully.
and thinking about what it is that we've learned with this lesson. What did you put for this first product? You are already given 37 times 462 equals 17,094. So you'd have 17,094 hundredths, which would be written as 170.94. Forty-two point times twelve point five eight, or forty-two times twelve and fifty-eight hundredths. That's one thousand two hundred fifty-eight hundredths. Then, this was hundredths, and this was hundredths. Then, and what would you do? You would end up dividing this by a hundred, right? To get your answer, which is five hundred twenty-eight point three six. Let's look at one last problem. We have 37 times 4.15. That would be 37 times 415 hundredths. Remember, this is commutative property, meaning I could go 415 times 37 hundredths as well. We'll show you using an area model. And then we'll match it up to that standard algorithm. Remember, we're dealing with hundreds, but in this case, we can just look at it 415 times 37. And then so that's 400, 10, and 5. And we have 7 plus 30 for the 37. 400 times 7 is 2,800. 10 times 7, 75 times 7, 35. Adding those together, we get 2,905. 30 times 400, place three zeros. 3 times 4 is 12. 10 times 30, 300. And 30 times 5, 150. And that would be 12,450. Mm, shrink it a little so that I have room for my standard algorithm and my other approach here, use an estimate as well, 40 times 4, which is 160. Let's carefully add those two together to finish up my area model. That's 15,355 hundredths, which would mean that it'd be 153.55. And then that's reasonable considering my estimate there. Looks like my estimate should be higher because I went from 37 to 40. At the same time, though, I did take 4.15 and rounded it down to 4. Here's my standard algorithm. I should be thinking 415 times 37, and that's 415 hundredths. And that's why I divide by 100. My answer here is actually... If I do 415 times 37 would be 100 times larger than this here. 7 times 5, 35. 5 regroup a 3. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 3 is 10. 0 regroup a 1. 4 times 7, 28, plus 1 is 29. Matches there. Cross out my regroups, place a 0. 3 times 5, 15. 5 regroup a 1. 3 times 1 being 3, plus 1 being 4, 3 times 4 being 12, and that also matches. Adding those together, I get 15,355, remember that's hundredths, and that's why I can go ahead and write 153.55 there. That's my actual answer.